Gold is an important metal. Throughout history, we have adored it as jewellery and valued it as currency. Nowadays, we are increasingly relying on it in some medicines and notably in circuitry in the contacts of modern electronics. And you can eat gold, it even has an e-number. But where does gold come from? Gold is found naturally in rocks and ores, but only in a few places around the world. Around 3,000 tonnes of gold was mined in 2017, with China, the US and Australia being the major contributors. Even then, gold is found alongside other metals and in really low concentrations. You can only get up to a gram of gold out for every tonne of rock mined. This is a problem. We go to extraordinary lengths to get the gold we treasure. 90% of the world's gold comes from mining processes that treat crushed rock or ore with large quantities of notoriously toxic cyanide. Though these processes may allow for the separation of gold from the rock, through accidental leakages and blatant dumping of hazardous material, cyanide reaches local water supplies. This has a devastating effect on the local environment for wildlife and workers. In fact, the use of cyanide makes gold the most toxic metal to produce. We also use incredible amounts of energy and resources, mining and processing tons of rock to get just a few grams of gold out. To get gold from crushed rock into gold ring requires many energy intense steps, including physical mining, crushing, storing, transporting, separating, refining, and many, many more. Metal production in general demands 10% of the world's energy supply and also produces significant quantities of carbon dioxide and other harmful emissions. Mining processes in general also produce a lot of waste and I'd like to give you a sense of scale of this. This is the Super Pit gold mine, formerly Australia's largest open cast gold mine, producing 28 tonnes of gold a year. This single mine is one and a half kilometres wide three and a half kilometers long and two and a half kilometers deep. This can be hard to visualize for a single mine, so here's some perspective. You might be able to make out a single speck on one of the roads in that pit. That's actually a dumper truck like this one that transports crushed rock from one site to the next. How big is that dumper truck? Well, here's a worker standing next to one. These mines are vast. Think of how much gold we get out of these mines compared to how much rock we've had to displace, the vast majority of which is simply disposed of. In fact, it can take 20 tonnes of rock to make that one gold ring. This is the severe and detrimental impact we have on the environment. Given our reliance on gold, it is important for us to look to other sources of the metal and for more efficient metal recovery processes. So, we need a better solution. From one ton of rock, you can get up to a gram of gold. But you can get 300 grams of gold from one ton of mobile phones. As there's much more gold in circuitry than rocks, it's much more efficient and environmentally friendlier to recycle gold from waste, electrical and electronic equipment called we, instead of mining it. Think of how many phones you've had in your lifetime. Now think of what's happened to those phones when you got a new one. Maybe you gave it to someone else to use. Maybe you threw it in the bin. Maybe it's in that drawer at home. But how many were recycled? In the EU, less than 20% of we is recycled. The vast majority of waste electronics are sent straight to landfill. So you might be thinking, well, how much gold is actually in my phone? What's the point in recycling it? The phones we value so dearly have around 30 milligrams of gold in them, or about 85 pence worth. This might not seem like a lot, so if I was to gather everyone's phone in from this audience of 700 people or so, then we'd have 21 grams of gold, or about uh, £630 worth, enough to buy two-thirds of a new iPhone 10. <laughs> this might not seem like the best deal, so how about this? Globally, 40 million tonnes of wee is sent to landfill every year. This is an urban gold mine. In gold alone, this is worth nine billion pounds. If we were to include all the metals and waste electronics we send to landfill, this goes up to 22 billion pounds. And this is only set to rise as the sales of electronic products and therefore amount of electronic waste is increasing every year. So recycling gold from we really is a golden opportunity. 
we can minimise our impact on the environment by maximising the use of metals we already have. But we has many metals in it, and gold is not the most abundant one in there. How do I get gold out of your phone? This is where my research comes in. I'm a chemist, and I investigate chemical methods for the recovery of metals without having to use toxic reagents. I said metals are found in low concentrations and alongside other metals, so we need some way to separate and concentrate them. One common way of doing this is to use a technique called pyrometallurgy, which essentially involves melting the metals out of your products. But this requires a lot of energy, high temperatures, and can be really highly polluting. One more efficient and greener way of separating metals on an industrial scale is to use a technique called solvent extraction, which has two liquids. We can dissolve all of the metals out of your phone and into an acidic water solution. This gives us a mixture of metals, including iron, copper, platinum, and gold, which is the most valuable to recycle. The other liquid is an oil, which sits on top of the water and doesn't mix into it, much like olive oil sits on balsamic vinegar. I design molecules called extractants that transport the metal of choice out of the water and into the oil. If we can do this selectively, then we can separate gold from the mixture. This is a sort of molecular level gold panning. We're sifting through all the metals in the mixture and only collecting the one that we want. So how do we get selective gold separation? Every metal in the water has a certain size, likes to form certain shapes, has a certain charge, basically has a preferred chemistry. For example, gold likes to form flat squares. Platinum likes to form octahedra. I design molecules that can discriminate between the metals based on these features, bind to gold and only gold, and transport it into the oil. This selectivity is a bit like the child's toy, where you can't get the round peg in the square hole. My molecules are particularly efficient. Not only do they recognize gold squares, they transport multiple at once as molecular golden nuggets. This gives us more metal out for less chemical used. We can then separate off the gold-containing oil and treat it to give us back the gold we treasure in an overall more efficient and less damaging process compared to traditional mining methods. This is what it looks like on the small scale in the lab. We take your mobile phone and dissolve it in the acidic water solution to give what we like to call mobile phone solution. <laughs> For interest, this green solution is 10 phones per litre. We contact that mixture of metals with the colourless oil that contains the extractant molecules. We mix the two liquids together, and as those two liquids separate, we, so we see gold move from the lower mixture up into the oil, achieving separation. We can then physically separate those two liquids and treat the oil in a couple of steps to give us back the gold metal. So how does all of this fit into the bigger picture? What we're trying to do is help close the loop and help create what's called a circular economy. That means, after going through all the effort of getting our metals in the first place, Instead of throwing our products away at the end of their lives, we should be aiming to recycle as much as possible to make the most of the metals we already have to the benefit of the economy, the environment, and society. Now, this might make it look like we've solved the problem. We can get gold out of your phone. And whilst there are many advantages to recycling metals and gold from we, there are still some challenges we have to address. We need to work with scientists and engineers to make sure we can deal with bulk volumes of ever more complex waste. We need to work with governments and businesses to make sure we have the infrastructure, incentives and framework in place to be able to collect enough waste to process it and dismantle it efficiently. Because ultimately, the value of what we recover has to be greater than the cost of recovering it. We need to work together to actively choose to recycle we so that we can still have access to metals that don't cost us the earth. Right back at the start, I asked, where does gold come from? I'll repose the question, where should gold come from? The answer is we, because together, we are golden. Thank you.